Hi, I'm Vicky Payne. I'm a GP vet and behaviourist and I'm also a veterinary consultant for Breakthrough and Oscars. Um, in this video I'm talking about how uh, dental problems can impact your dog's behaviour. So hopefully we all know that we should be looking after our dog's teeth on a daily basis. But I think it's quite easy to forget about those teeth in there and to not consider how they may be impacting your dog's health and behaviour. So the first thing to do to talk about is um, what's normal. So baby puppies, when you get them, come with a, an armoury of needle sharp teeth and they bite everything. So it's important to appreciate that when you get your puppy home and they're chewing you, they're chewing the furniture, as well as any toys that you've bought them, that that is completely normal puppy behaviour. Puppies explore the environment with their teeth, with their mouths. What is important though, is that we get our puppies used to from a young age, having their mouths examined. Um, so even with tiny baby puppies, getting them used to lifting the lip, rubbing your fingers in there, opening the mouth up, sticking a finger in there. And I will often get a little treat and just pop that in their mouth um, from an early age so that they actually think that me getting my fingers in there is a really good thing and not a frightening thing. We want to give our baby puppies lots of appropriate things to chew on. So rope raggies, you can soak those in water and freeze them when they're teething and that can be really helpful to reduce the pain in their mouths. But also things like root chews, rubber kong type of toys that you can also put some food in. They're all really enjoyable things for a puppy to chew on and more appropriate than your furniture uh, and your fingers. Puppies are going to play bitey games with you. If you watch a litter of puppies, then they are very bitey with each other and with their mum given the opportunity. And I've found that when I've had puppies and kept them with my lots of other dogs, they're not very bitey with people because they're getting to play those mouthy games with, with the other dogs. Through those games, they learn how to, um, they learn predatory place, they'll stalk each other, pounce on each other. They will get a lot of rough and tumble, which is actually a really beneficial type of play for dogs. But they will be taught by the other dogs how hard to bite. If I've got a puppy and they bite secret too hard, she's just going to walk off and stop playing with them. That's going to be an end of game. And the puppy soon learns that if they don't bite so hard, that the other dogs will keep playing with them. Similarly, if a puppy's playing with us nicely and maybe licking our hands, and I do encourage puppies to lick my hands by smearing a bit of food on there because I want them to think that my hands around their face is a good thing, all well and good. If they decide to bite down on me again, ah, I'm not going to play with you anymore, that, that's not appropriate. But what I will do is get a toy and pop that into their mouth instead. I seem to have lost my little helper. Secret! <laughs> and she's back. She said you're talking about puppies. Uh, so yeah, so we'll pop a toy into their mouth instead and let them chew on that and show them that that's what we want rather than chewing on people. Because although it may be cute when a little tiny sort of four kilo puppy is chewing on your fingers, it's not going to be as cute when that's a 25, 30 kilo adolescent dog hanging off your arm. Other things that are normal in, in puppy and young dog behaviour, so everybody expects their baby puppies to chew a little bit. They're often surprised by how hard they bite, so give them things, appropriate things to bite on. If they start getting bitey, look at the times that they do that. So often it's when they're tired, overtired, hungry, grumpy. So sometimes if your puppy goes from being a little angel into a little bitey devil, it's time to just pop them in their quiet place, into their bed, um, into their sleeping area and give them a bit of downtime. The next time that we start to see um, changes in behaviour due to the teeth will be when puppies start to lose their teeth. So at about five months old, they'll start to lose the incisors. These are the front teeth. Um, you may not, there we go. Um, you may not see very much of that to start with. You'll look down one day and there'll be grown up teeth coming through rather than the baby teeth. But as the bigger teeth start coming through, these side teeth, the molars and premolars, that can be really painful for puppies and you'll start to see them chew again. So puppies that had stopped chewing everything up may well start again. So that's the time to look at getting those chew toys out again. As I say, raggies soaked, uh, rope raggies soaked in some uh, dog safe stock so with no salt in or just in some plain water and frozen can be really nice things for them to chomp on. At that time, if you've been training your puppy, if you've been doing like tug work for agility, if you've been doing retrieves for gun dog work or obedience, probably give it a break at the time that your, your puppy is teething because their mouth is going to be sore like a teething baby and you can easily put them off. If the reward for doing something really good is a tug and that hurts, then that's not going to be rewarding for your puppy. In fact, it's going to be the opposite. It's going to be unpleasant for them and they're going to be less likely to repeat the behaviours that you want. And cut them some slack generally in their training. I often give my dogs a bit of a break at that age 
we can go over stuff that they know how to do, maybe practice some heel work position, maybe do some scent work, but I'm not going to push them for anything new or complicated when they're worrying about their mouths. Occasionally in work I see dogs that have a lot more problems with teething, so I've occasionally had them come in with a fever, unable to eat their food, and really, really miserable. So I think if your dog does become really miserable and depressed around five, six months old, it's definitely worth popping them into the vet and just check that it isn't that they've got a bad case of teething. So your dog's up to seven months, they've got all their adult teeth in, you're thinking, wow, that's it, teething is over, tooth problems are over. I'm afraid not. I very often see another bout of chewing in dogs somewhere between 10 and 18 months of age. It seems to coincide when they stop with when they stop growing. So you'll see it earlier in small breed dogs and later in large breed dogs. But it seems as their bones stop growing that the teeth sort of cement into the head. And again, they can be a little bit painful at that time. So again, you might see an increase in inappropriate chewing again. And you might see them going off activities that you've been doing, like retrieving toys or playing with tuggies. So we've covered puppies and adolescent dogs, now we're into our adult dogs. So I would start my young dogs, I would make sure that all my dogs are happy to have their mouths handled. Secret doesn't mind if I lift up her lips, look at her front teeth like she was a show dog, look at her side teeth open up right in there and have a really good look. It's important that you have a good look in the mouth at least once a week to identify any problems. But I would also advise that you're cleaning the teeth ideally once a day. So my preferred toothpaste or enzyme toothpaste, if you look on the Oscars website, you can buy this BFAR enzymatic toothpaste. So always go for an enzymatic toothpaste. These have enzymes in that are gonna break down the plaque bacteria and do a lot of the hard work for you. They will work without brushing they work better with brushing. So how I would introduce a dog to the toothpaste is first of all, just let, ooh, let them taste it. That came out a bit more than I was expecting there. Secret, secret. That <laughs> went on the floor, so secret thinks that's great. So I'm just gonna let them taste it from my finger and most dogs are quite happy with that. A few days later, I'd be letting them have a lick and just rubbing it round with my finger secret's quite happy with that and then we can progress you can either use a toothbrush um, often they come with two ends so you've got a small one for small dogs a big one for bigger dogs oh yeah we like the toothpaste but I really like these finger toothbrushes um, again available on the website um, squidge the toothpaste into the bristles and then you're just rubbing along the outer surface of the teeth on one side and then on the other side. Good girl. There's no need because of the enzyme action and my sneezing dog to worry about getting into all the nooks and crannies because the enzymes will do that for you. If your dog really won't let you, okay, won't let you clean the teeth, uh, there are dental chews that you can use, there are dental wipes that they might be happier with. But most dogs, if you if you start gently, will be okay with tooth brushing. What we are looking at in the mouth is we want to see nice clean teeth. There we go. Nice clean teeth. I mean, they're not pearly white because she's nearly nine years old, um, but we've got no plaque build up on there. The gums are a nice gentle pink colour. Um, we've got no redness, no bleeding. If we have a sniff, there isn't a foul stench there. So things that you may notice if your dog has a dental problem could be bad breath. Dogs are never going to have minty fresh breath um, and even this toothpaste is liver flavoured so it's not going to make them smell minty fresh. But it shouldn't be offensive, it just should be dog breath smell. If you're getting any nasty odour there um, then you may have a problem with the teeth. With a breed like Secret the teeth are quite neat and tidy um, and they fit together beautifully. Uh, in breeds with a shorter face so something like a French Bulldog or a Pug, the teeth are often crowded together and don't meet normally and they're much more likely to get food trapping. So that can be a cause of, of bad breath in those breeds. We might also find broken teeth. So I did recently find a broken tooth in secret at the back and we had to uh, knock her out and, and remove that surgically. Um, she's all recovered from that now. Interestingly, she showed no signs of that damaged tooth, but signs that you may see, you might see drooling from oral pain. You could see swelling on the face. A really common place, good girl, to see swelling is under the eye. So swelling that come up, swellings that come up under the eye here 
are often because of abscesses in the tooth root and ideally your vet will take an x-ray and see which tooth is affected but often that tooth needs to be removed. We might see reluctance to eat, although dogs, um, especially a breed like a spaniel, it's going to take a lot to put her off her food. And Secret was not put off her at all by her bad tooth. You might notice that they're chewing on one side of their mouth, so only holding toys and chewing them on one side rather than chewing on both sides. If you've got a dog that previously liked to retrieve, that's something that can go awry when they've got dental pain. They're not going to want to hold on to a toy and bring it back to you if they've got pain in their mouth. Equally, if you play games with your dog that involve tugging, a reluctance to join in tugging activity might mean that they've got mouth pain. The signs might be just more subtle than that, so you might notice that your dog is grumpier with other dogs or grumpy when you're handling around the head, so you might only be going for the ears, but if they've got a raging toothache, they're not going to want you handling around their heads at all. Um, so they might be snappy with other dogs or grumpy with other dogs, they might be snappy and grumbly with you. Um, they may not even want to go out for a walk. Toothache is one of the worst things for a person to have, and I can't imagine that it's any better for dogs to have. Interestingly, quite often I will pick up dental disease during um, an examination for a vaccination, recommend that we do a dental treatment. The owners hadn't really appreciated often how painful their dogs are until I've taken bad teeth out. Once we've taken bad teeth out and the dog's finished its course of antibiotics and painkillers, owners often come back at that post-op check actually feeling kind of guilty because the dog is now so much happier and they've realised that actually they were hiding a lot of dental pain. So I think we've always got to be really mindful if our dogs start showing behaviour changes. One of the first things that I always think about is have they got some pain? And it might not be an you know, it might not be a limb pain, it could be dental pain, it could be ear pain. And dogs are pretty good at hiding those things. So if they don't want to do something in training or their behaviour changes, they're always things that, that I'm thinking about could be related to pain. There are other veterinary reasons that we need to have a good, happy, clean mouth in our dogs. So dental disease, as well as causing the loss of the teeth, the first thing that we'll see is redness around the gum line and a swelling of that gum line. That allows more food and bacteria to build up under the gum line and the gum gradually recedes. You'll see more tooth root. Eventually, the sensitive parts of the tooth root become exposed and then the tooth will eventually become loose or you'll get abscesses around the roots. That's obviously something that we don't want. But as well as that, having a high amount of bacteria in the mouth, they, those bacteria can get into the bloodstream and they can start to affect other organs. So they can affect the heart, they can affect the kidneys, and obviously digestive health. If you've got a mouthful of bacteria, every time you chew and swallow, those bacteria will go down into the gut. So dental health, really important. As you saw, brushing teeth takes maybe 30 seconds. It doesn't take long at all. My dogs really enjoy having their teeth brushed on the whole, and as soon as they see the toothbrush come out, they're here to have their teeth brushed. It's just making it part of your day. So my recommendation is that you choose a time of day when you're not gonna be rushed, that you're gonna to remember to do it. So for me, it's when I sit down in the evening after they've had their tea and after I've had my tea. Just a reminder for you that we've got loads of uh, resources on the Oscars website. If you go to the Oscars page and look at the blogs, blogs, we've got blogs on routine teeth cleaning in dogs and cats and a couple of other ones on there on dental care in dogs and cats. There's also some lovely infographics on there which will explain how to look after your pet's teeth. You may also want to follow us on the social media, so we're on YouTube, we're also on Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn.